everyone, this is your Mars Hill Latin 3 video lecture for April 5th. Let's start out with some reminders. So, um, your quizzes, you're starting to do better on them, I think people are getting used to them, but I wanted to, just this one more week, I'm going to reopen last week's quiz. So the quiz over lessons 22 and 23 will open up again on Tuesday. Um, at midnight, in the morning, that is, on Tuesday, and close on Thursday night, just like quiz 21 did this past week. And you can retake that quiz. And it will give you uh, two chances, so you can even um, do a practice run and then do your final, uh, final quiz 22-23. Okay? Um, about your homework, Almost everyone got this, but some people were confused. What I want you to do is to type, look at the questions in the PDF and type your answers into a regular document. Uh, some of you use Word, some of you use Google Docs. There are many word, pro or word processors, but what I need is a document. And then you need to turn it into a PDF and then you attach it in the under the assignment on your web page of Canvas. And if you have any questions about that, please text me, email me, call me. You know where to find me. Um, what else? Um, I send more emails out now that we can't meet in person. Uh, and so that's my way of getting all of the reminders we need to you. So please carefully read them and if you have some question for me, check those emails before asking because maybe I've answered your question already in the email. Um, this is important because in college you will certainly have professors who write you emails and they will start to get annoyed if they uh, see that you're asking them questions that they've already answered. It's kind of like that classic question um, that a student asks and then the teacher answers, um, check the syllabus, it's in the syllabus. So make sure you check my emails carefully and read all of them. You may also get opportunities for extra credit there, so you might lose out on that kind of thing if you're not paying close enough attention. Also, uh, per our usual plan, uh, this week there will be a help session on Tuesday morning one at 9, one on Wednesday evening at 4 and 1 on Friday morning at 9. And if you'd like to participate in one of those help sessions, you should email Mr. Martin and myself, uh, ideally by the day before the help session, so that we can know that someone wants to be in it and we can hold it for you. One of the things that we've been doing in these help sessions is to help go through assignments. So this last week uh, you had that reading passage as one of your exercises and we went, uh, the people who came on Tuesday morning, we went through that and we translated it. So that took about 20 minutes and that could help you get through your homework more easily um, to have the help of your peers and myself or Mr. Martin. So even if you don't have any questions, you can come and we can work on an exercise together. All right, so last week you learned the present and imperfect subjunctive of sum, and you learned the imperfect subjunctive of um, active and passive of all four conjugations. And the imperfect subjunctive is one of my favorites because it's very simply formed, right? It's just the infinitive of the word, the present active infinitive, plus your personal endings, active or passive, right? Um, and the subjunctive of sum isn't too difficult either. It's just um, sin, sis, sit, sinus, sepis, sent, and sn, ss, aset, asemus, asepis, ascent. And you'll notice that the imperfect subjunctive of sum is just like the imperfect subjunctive of your other verbs in that it's imperfect is just the, uh, the infinitive plus your personal ending. All right, so this week we're adding the perfect and the pluperfect subjunctive active and passive. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're just learning the perfect conjunctive this week in Lesson 24. Pardon me. So you're learning the perfect active and perfect passive conjunctive. So the active is um, formed this way. It's formed by taking your perfect stem and adding eri, E-R-I, and then adding your personal endings, okay? That's the active. So for amo, you take your third principal parts stem. So we take am amavi, and we cut off the I. So we have amav, and then we add eri, and then your active personal endings, mst, mstsnt. So we get amaverim, amaveris, amaverit, amaverimus, amaveritus, amaverint. Okay? And it's the same situation for uh, the second, third, and fourth conjugations and your big conjugation IO verbs. So that is pretty simple. The perfect subjunctive, passive, is formed with your fourth principal part and uh, sim, sis, sit, simus, sitis, sint. So that is the present subjunctive of sum. Um, this is like your perfect, um, a, uh, your perfect passive indicative, where you the perfect passive indicative is formed with amatus, uh, the fourth principal part that is, plus present active indicative of sum, which is sum, right? So you would conjugate amatus sum, amatus est, amatus est, amati sumus, etc. Okay? So the only difference is that you're using the present subjunctive of sum rather than the present indicative of sum for your present or perfect subjunctive passive. Okay? Very easy. Now, you may have noticed um, that the perfect subjunctive active sounds a lot like another declension and that is the it sounds very much like the future perfect indicative active right uh, so the future perfect indicative active of amo is amavero amaveris amaverit etc right so the only difference um, in between these two between the future perfect indicative active and the perfect subjunctive active is the first person singular, um, where we have ama verim in the subjunctive and ama vero in the indicative. And this rarely causes problems in terms of translation. So it would, it would there's very few cases in my, what is it now, like 10 years of Latin? that I have come into a context reading where I didn't know whether something was going to be the subjunctive or the uh, indicative form. But just know that they're the same and make sure you memorize them carefully so that you don't get confused about it later on, okay? Um, let's see, what else here? We have some new vocabulary this week. Uh, about 10 of them, and they're not too difficult. And you don't have any new grammar to learn, uh, so just make sure, maybe it would be a good idea to re, uh, review my lecture from last week on the uses of the subjunctive that we've covered. I'm not going to explain them again since you have that video, but you're, when we do have a test, It'll be good to have listened to that at least once or twice extra. Okay. Um, let's just make sure. I don't need to cover. Okay. So, um, one more note. Uh, when you are finished with your homework, you can turn it, it actually, I encourage you to turn it in um, whenever you finish it. So, um, you don't have to turn it in on Monday at or by 10 on Monday, turn it in whenever it's finished. So I have people, some people have emailed or have submitted their homework on Thursday or Friday. And what that lets me do is sometimes I can grade it on during the week. I have time to grade it. 
so that you would get you could possibly get your homework back even before it's due, um, even before Monday, um, if I happen to have time. So, just an encouragement you might pick up, pick me up on that opportunity. All right. Uh, I think that's everything we need to cover today. So, watch this video. Do your worksheets. Study for your quiz. Take your quiz. Retake quiz 22, 23 if you need to uh, between Tuesday and Thursday. And I may see you in help session. Thank you.